Every story we do starts with one simple question. What does it mean for you? Not just hunting for facts, but searching for solutions. What other changes have been made and what changes do you hope to make? We don't stop until you have answers and got hundreds of pages. More investigations and more stories that matter to you. This isn't a washout, this is a blowout. Every day. In all the places you go. The Low Country's news leader, Live 5 News. We have spent hours going through the videos sent to us from Charleston County Sheriff on the death of Jamal Sutherland. Like we mentioned earlier, Sutherland died at the Charleston County Jail back in January following an arrest at the Palmetto Low Country Behavioral Health Center. The solicitor says he was being taken out of his cell to go to a bond hearing, but died while being subdued. We have some of that video for you right now showing the moments leading up to his death. Raphael James breaks down some of that body cam footage. We do want to warn you, though, it is disturbing. Okay, it bears repeating that what you're about to see is troubling. It is disturbing. It is officers getting ready to go into the cell of Jamal Sutherland. Crack the door. The door, Sutherland! The door, Sutherland! Get back, get prisoner. Get down. Something is fired from a taser, it seems. You see Sutherland hit the ground. She's asking him to come here. At this point, he's still on the ground. Keep going. Keep coming. Keep coming, it sounds like they're saying. Keep sliding. Keep sliding. Keep sliding. He's been hit once with the taser. Looks like this laser point. Turn on to your stomach. He's his hands are behind his back at this point. Doors open more. One walks in. His hands are behind his back. Officer goes to his head, takes him to the ground, and now he's apparently being hit with tasers. There's a stun gun or a drive device into his thigh right about there. He says, I can't breathe. There seems to be a knee on his back there. And you just heard him say he can't breathe. There are hours of footage that we are combing through and uh, trying to get prepared for air. We will bring that to you at a later time. In the newsroom, I'm Raphael James. Back to you. 
Again, all of that video was released just before 11 o'clock last night. Hours of video. Ninth Circuit solicitor Scarlett Wilson says her investigation based on a report from the state law enforcement division found Sutherland became unresponsive and died after Charleston County deputies worked to forcibly remove him from his jail cell. They were trying to take him to a bond hearing for a misdemeanor assault charge. According to the Charleston County Coroner's Office, a forensic autopsy shows the cause of death as, quote, excited state with adverse pharmacotherapeutic effect during subdual process. The manner of death is currently undetermined. A covert police practice. The Charleston County Sheriff's Office monitored the social media posts of some activists until Live 5 brought it to light. Our team sifted through more than 200 pages of public records. Digging for facts, holding the powerful accountable. Is breaking her silence for the first time since our Live 5 investigation. So why did she wait more than a week to respond to our request for an interview? Because when the story really matters, we don't stop until you have answers. Live 5 News. Right now at 6, we are learning the Charleston County Sheriff's Office monitored some local activists and at least one state lawmaker on social media. Now, this comes in connection with the death of Jamal Sutherland, who was tased nine times and died on the floor of the jail in the Charleston County area back in January. That's according to newly released emails obtained by Live 5 Investigates. Our Rob Way tells us why they say this happened and how some are now calling for answers. Before protesters took to the streets earlier this year, we're now learning several of them, along with a state lawmaker, were being watched online. It was uh, pretty unfair to criminalize me um, for defending a victim um, of police violence. This email, which we obtained through a Freedom of Information request, shows an analyst with the Charleston County Sheriff's Office sending command staff screenshots of a number of social media posts demanding justice for Jamal Sutherland. Video released a day after that email was sent shows Sutherland being tased and pepper sprayed inside the jail before his death. Three posts from State Representative Wendell Gilliard were included among the social media they say they were actively monitoring. He now wants answers from Sheriff Kristen Graziano. I, I feel just somewhat embarrassed at the fact that she would even look in this direction for what? You know, I mean, you know, I feel like a common criminal uh, if I had to look through her eyes. And I think it's wrong. She used the wrong approach. I think it's unprofessional. Uh, and, and she just has some explaining to do. Sheriff's Office spokesperson Roger Antonio says the analyst who sent the email is assigned to the Seahawk Operation Center and is responsible for informing them of any intelligence or information that may forecast a potential public safety concern in the community, regardless of whether they're the agency that is directly involved. It's just appalling that she would use this type of tactics uh, to come after the wrong people, or where it is blatant uh, the people that she should be putting emphasis on. Uh, as a threat to the community or whatever. Uh, she, she should be putting that on her offices. She needs to look in-house. Um, I would hope the sheriff um, would realize that um, the activists in the community just want justice. We don't want to be victim of these types of surveillance um, activities. We don't want to be labeled a security threat uh, to our community because we speak out and we defend people that have um, been victims of violence from law enforcement. Sheriff Graziano declined an interview today, referring questions instead to the Seahawk Interagency Operations Center. They have not gotten back to us. In Charleston County, Rob Way, Live 5 News. Look at these rainfall totals now. We're talking about almost eight inches of rain over Ooh. down to parts of Collin County, including eight Henderson inches Hill. of rain. Did eight you? inches wow. in our rainfall totals there from our Doppler estimates. Six plus in parts of northern Collin County, even four over parts of Dorchester County and one to two inches over Charleston and Berkeley County. So bottom line, a lot of rain obviously caused some damage, which we're going to continue to bring you team coverage on. But that just shows you what these slow moving systems can do. Thank you, Bill. You're ready for a vivid picture. Watch this. That rain was enough, and as you know, to sweep part of the street, the roadway away. This is in Hendersonville in Cotton County. Nick Reagan, as you see right now, is literally in the middle of it all. Nick, that road is going to be closed for some time, and looking at your video there, we can understand why. 
Bill, and you know, take a look at just how much water is still flowing through this pipe. The rain has stopped, but still a ton of water coming through the pipe and uh, just destroying this roadway. You can see how much of it has been washed away downstream. Now, take a look at the video from earlier today. This is about one o'clock in the afternoon. Thankfully, no one was hurt when the car fell into this pit. A neighbor was watching the whole thing and told me that the driver had pulled off to the side of the road but got stuck. He says the driver and a passenger got out, but it was too late for the Honda Civic. The ground gave way and it tumbled into this rubble. It took several hours to get the car out. That same neighbor who was watching all this told me that there's normally water on this road when it rains, but it's just that usually there's a road underneath that water. The South Carolina Highway Patrol says that this story could have turned out a whole lot differently, and they praise the driver for not driving through that dangerous water. Things happen, things break, and, you know, it's something that, you know, happens all the time, and it's kind of something that's probably going to continue to happen, unfortunately. So just be smart and, and pay attention and make sure you, you know, turn around if you can or, or use alternate routes when you see water on the roadways. Now, DOT is working to assess all the damage. They're going to have to see how much of the road is damaged up and down from this incident. I can tell you that as I was getting into the pit here, I could hear chunks of rubble still falling off of the main road. So they definitely have their work cut out for them. But Bill and. We're following this developing story out of Colleton County tonight, where a mother and her son were found shot to death. The Colleton County Sheriff's Office says 52 year old Margaret and 22 year old Paul Murdoch were killed last night at a home in the Islandton area of the county. We have team coverage tonight out of Colleton County. Katie Kamen talked with folks in town about the shooting, but first to Lisa Wiseman. Lisa, what do we know about the murders so far? So basically that it's just ongoing right now, Bill. Uh, deputies here at the Colleton County Sheriff's Office, they first got that 911 call at about 10 o'clock last night. They arrived to find the Murdochs, uh, Margaret and Paul, had been murdered, found inside of a building on their property there. Now this is a pretty well-known family here in the Lowcountry area. Of course, uh, the Murdoch family, uh, several of them, uh, several family members have served as solicitor for the area over the over the past decades. So last night uh, their bodies were found inside of a property along Moselle Road. It's sort of like a, a compound there with a couple of different driveways. Again, the Murdochs found inside of a building. Logan Reichstadt joining me right now and you have more information about that property. And we've got a new view from the sky of this property as well. It's a really large property with a number of different outbuildings and now we can show in just a moment we'll show some video of it from the the air. But here's a little bit of what we know so far. There were a number of buildings involved here, and it was really a flurry of activity when I got to the scene. You'd see one, two, three vehicles all unmarked coming into the scene and then leaving or pulling into another driveway as part of their investigation. The video you're seeing now is that drone video of the property showing the different buildings, but really most of the activity, the investigation, seemed to be focused around one of the buildings that was a little bit closer to the road. The video showing crews examining the property as they're investigating into this double homicide continues. Now at this hour, we still don't know if there are any suspects on the loose or if any arrests have been made, but we do know, according to officials, that there is no ongoing threat to the community at this point, Lisa. All right, and there is a, a forensic autopsy happening on those bodies in just a couple of days. The uh, county coroner told me that is set for Thursday. Our colleague Katie Cammon, also here in Colleton County, she had the chance to speak with locals about the news, about uh, what they had heard. Katie? Lisa, as law enforcement continues their investigation over there at the scene, folks across Colleton and Hampton County say they're following what they're calling a shocking story. Now, I spoke with folks all over the area who say they are just saddened and heartbroken by the news of Paul and Margaret's death. Now, some folks who knew the family well didn't want to go on camera, but they tell me they are just heartbroken. Others say even though they don't know the Murdochs personally, they'll be thinking of the family. It's awful, you know, like you don't expect to get shot on your own property, especially like private land. 
you go out for a good day and then get a call later that your family's dead is just awful. I send my best wishes out to to everyone that been involved. The law firm associated with the family posted earlier on Facebook thanking the community for their thoughts and calls and condolences. Back to you. Thanks, Katie. And the younger of those two victims, Paul Murdoch, a 22 years old, he was actually involved in a criminal case. There were criminal charges pending against him related to a deadly boat crash that happened several years ago. The attorney general's office said today that they are indeed dropping those charges. Live for you right now in Colleton County, Lisa Wiseman, Live 5 News. Lisa, thank you. You can follow the latest in this murder case by downloading our Live 5 News app. That app is free in your app store, and you can also check out... The South Carolina Law Enforcement Division says they're investigating a shooting in Hampton County with ties to a prominent low country family that lost a mother and son to a shooting several months ago. SLED's public information officer says the person shot was Alex Murdoch, the father and husband of Paul and Margaret Murdoch. Paul and Margaret were found shot to death on their Colleton County hunting property back in June. The Murdoch's family lawyer says he spoke with members of the family. He says they told him Alex was conscious, alert, and talking. The lawyer says Alex was shot in the head while changing a tire Saturday afternoon and was airlifted to MUSC in Charleston. In a statement, a spokesperson for the family says, quote, the Murdoch family has suffered through more than any one family could ever imagine. We expect Alex to recover and ask for your privacy while he recovers. This is a developing story. We'll update you on air and online as we learn more. Just into our newsroom, a man has been arrested in connection with the shooting involving Alec Murdoch in Hampton County. Deputies say Murdoch was shot on the side of the road on September 4th. 61 year old Curtis Smith facing multiple charges tonight, including assisted suicide and insurance fraud. The state law enforcement division says Alex Mur Alec Murdoch gave Smith a gun and told him to shoot him that day. Sled agents say Murdoch admitted to having Smith shoot him so his son can collect the life insurance policy valued at $10 million. Live 5 News starts now with breaking news. Breaking right now at noon, Alex Murdoch behind bars down in Florida on charges of misappropriating funds. The state law enforcement division has charged him with two felony counts of obtaining property by false pretenses. They say this is connected to the wrongful death settlement for the family's longtime housekeeper, Gloria Satterfield. Agents with SLED, as well as the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, took Murdoch into custody this morning after his release from a rehab center in Orlando. Murdoch was booked into the Orange County Jail, where he will be held until he receives an extradition hearing. If extradition is granted or waived, he will be brought back here to South Carolina for a bond hearing. Now, these new charges come as the man accused of shooting Murdoch says he didn't do it, and in fact, he claims he was set up. Curtis Smith says Murdoch called him on September the 4th, needing his help and asked him to meet him on a rural road in Hampton County. Smith says when he arrived, Murdoch was holding a gun. He's down there like this. He said, yeah, you got to take care of this. And I said, well, I can't do it. And he told me he turned his head. I just grabbed his arm, put it behind his head, took the gun from him. Smith claims during that struggle, the gun went off. Then he claims he got rid of the weapon and went home. Murdoch claims he's been addicted to opioids for 20 years, and he says Smith was his drug dealer. Smith says that's not true. He denies that charge. My name is Joey. Oh, hold on. Can I erase? Not so bean, so fine. Years at life, huh? 11 years. I'm an oldie, but goodie. Favorite subject, anything but math. Come on, I'm a weather guy. Earth science and gym. Oh, Mac. Middle school English. She was so funny. I had a lot of great teachers. I was homeschooled, and I feel like my mom would be really offended if I didn't put her. I'm not sure they all like me. But...
Are we gonna be graded on our penmanship? <laughs> I don't know how to spell it, but I'll try. Years at Live Five? I can't count that high. 20 years. 48. Whoa. Mr. Lennon. You know why? Because he drove the coolest Grand Torino. I loved English. I love lunch. French. Ho, ho, ho. Voting is now open for the Rescue Brew Spokes Dog and Spokes Cat. Now through October 8th, you can choose which low country cat and dog you want to appear on the 2020 Rescue Brew Can. Every $1 donation to the Charleston Animal Society is a vote for your favorite. For details and rules, visit charlestonanimalsociety.org slash rescue brew. The Palmetto Brewing Company Rescue Brew Spokes Dog and Spokes Cat Contest. Proudly sponsored by Live 5 News. Decades of death records vanished. Where are they? I have no earthly idea. The former coroner, gone. Now newly elected, she's forced to piece it all together. Holy crap, what did I just put myself into? <laughs> Life 5 investigates why Williamsburg County can't figure out what happened to their death records or even... So you weren't even sure where he was keeping the bodies before you took office? I have no clue. Monday on Life 5 News at 7. News. Right now at 7, the new coroner of Williamsburg County says she doesn't know what happened to decades worth of death records, and she says she has no clue where the previous coroner was keeping bodies. Rob Way uncovered this all and tells us how she, along with other officials, are questioning if records were even kept. For families or police looking for death records in Williamsburg County, they may be out of luck. I know because I tried. I was working on another story and requested some of these death records, and the county's coroner, Ivory Henryhan, told me she has no death records from before January. Do you have any idea where these records are? I have no earthly idea. I, I have no idea. I can tell you where the records are from January 1st, 2021, um, but I have no idea where any records are prior to then. Have, were records even kept, do you think? I don't know. I would hope so. Henry Hand was sworn in as the county's new coroner at the beginning of this year. She replaced Harrison McKnight, who was coroner for more than 40 years and chose not to run for re-election. His deputy coroner did run, though, and lost to Henry Hand in the election last fall. I personally reached out to the coroner to when I won the election about a few days after the election. And my response from that coroner was, um, you have the knowledge so you can figure it out. Williamsburg County Supervisor Dr. Tiffany Wright says she's always respected McKnight and is a little surprised Henry Hand has not been given the records. She says, though, since coroners are elected, there's nothing the county can do. I'm hopeful that um, our previous coroner did do his due diligence in keeping up with the records and maybe I'm hoping it's just a matter of, of a mistake um, that was made. but. Obviously, if not, then at that point, our, our current uh, coroner, Ms. Henry Hand, will have to take whatever action she has to take. It's not the only problem Henry Hand ran into. When she was sworn in, she says she didn't have a physical coroner's office or even coolers to store corpses. You weren't even sure where he was keeping the bodies before you took office? I have no clue. I have no clue. Right now, the Williamsburg County Sheriff's Office has given her a temporary place to work, a change of scene from the previous coroner. They had a, a building that was um, adjacent, I believe it was on 52, that was on the side of a, um, a car mechanic shop, and that was considered the building where the coroner was. But as I stated um, earlier, we've made some big changes. When she got in office, she, she required um, additional items more so than what the previous did and we we were able to help her with that. You know, I started files, I started coroner reports for every case. Every case that I've had has a file, has a file number, um, easy access so if a family wants to come in and discuss a case I can go back into my files and pull that folder. I reached out to the previous coroner who told me a week ago he had some records and was going to reach out to coroner Henry Hand that day. As of this morning, though, she says he called, but has not handed anything over. We were hearing from Mrs. Henry Hand. She said a, um, a number of the records are missing, that she wasn't able to get the records from when you were coroner in terms of death records. 
Do you have any response to, to those accusations? You're seeing his direct response to my question on the screen, telling me she has some records, but not all. It's a situation the president of the South Carolina Coroners Association says she has never seen before. Every coroner does things a little bit differently, um, but they should be handed over from one coroner to the other uh, because, you know, Ms. Henry Hand would not have access to any previous death prior to January. So if law enforcement needs that information or families needing that information and she doesn't have access to that, it makes it very difficult for her. Henry Hand says she has no animosity towards her predecessor, but needs access to the death records. Her next step may be calling in the governor to help get them. In Williamsburg County, I'm Rob Way. If you're a family in Williamsburg County who has not been able to get death records, we want to hear from you. Email Rob and our investigative team at the email address you see right there on your screen. It's the most wonderful time of the year. But for some families, putting food on the table is tough right now. That's why we're once again teaming up with our friends at iHeartRadio to raise money for the Lowcountry Food Bank. To donate, go to lowcountryfoodbank.org. Let's make sure no one goes hungry this holiday season. Hope for the Holidays, sponsored by Joy Law Firm, proudly serving the Lowcountry for more than 50 years. Thanks to you, more Lowcountry families can enjoy the holidays without the worry of going hungry. Thanks for your generous donations to the Lowcountry Food Bank and for giving your neighbors hope for the holidays. Sponsored by Joy Law Firm. Natural born anchorman. Working with Bill Sharp is never dull. It's a wild ride. The room lights up whenever he walks in. It's so pleasant to each and every person. There's no denying the man's a legend. It really feels like he cares. He just knew how to make you feel special. He takes his job seriously, but not himself. He's been here longer than this building. Maybe the land, maybe the dirt underneath it, I don't know. I think I've learned more about the English language and grammar from Bill than I did in all of my years of high school. Don't make a grammatical error in front of Bill or he'll let you know about it. Just to kind of rub elbows with him and, and learn from him and, and have him as a friend has been such a positive thing in my life. You've left a mark on all of us and uh, you'll be missed grateful for the many lessons that I learned from you. We'll miss the depth you bring to our broadcast, the history that you bring to our city, uh, and what you've done for us all around the Lowcountry. I'm really going to miss you, Bill.